Hello, how are you? Am I, I seem very large in the screen, is that true? Um, good evening, everybody. It's great to see you. I hope that you, oh, okay, I think we're all right. Happy Saturday night. Um, it is a fine evening here in Chicago and um, I'm in my favorite place. I'm in my favorite place, my office. Um, but I'm here with uh, on a live stream talking to people who who are like me, you know? Uh, it feels so lonesome sometimes. <laughs> and then I come on a live stream uh, for Quilt Nerd uh, or talk to, talk to Quilt Nerds throughout the week. And it's just really great. It's really good to find your people, you know what I mean? So um, it's, yeah, yeah, a, a bunch of Quilt Nerds are at QuiltCon and I've been getting some like reports from the field. It seems like a really good show. Um, and so that's exciting. And I hear that turnips are trending. I hear turnips are trending. Uh, a report from the field includes a report from Stephanie Cake. Stephanie Cake, everybody. Stephanie Cake, you were the one who told me that turnips are trending. Can you tell me what you yeah. heard? So, you know, we were chatting the other day on, uh, I, I dropped into the co-working session like yeah. at the last minute um, and uh, found out that Kim Kite of Ruby Star Society has yeah. some really cute turnip fabric. It's true. And I'm just gonna pull it up. Uh, some very special ladies who own a quilt shop in uh, San Luis Obispo are helping me get some of it. <laughs> um, but then I see this really cute, I believe Jill sent me um, a link or a, a, a screenshot of it. This very cute little mini quilt that a quilter made right before they went to QuiltCon mm. of a turnip. Amazing. And then I totally miss it until somebody points it out to me. The winner for improvisational quilt at QuiltCon is called Turnip. I mean, I have Can not. You believe it? I, it's incredible. It's incredible. And and if you're not sure why we care about the turnip thing, there's a turnip of hope um, in this in this world, in this quilt nerd world, and it means a lot to us. And I'm gonna open this right now. Um, it means so much to us. And Stephanie Kate coined the phrase "turnip of hope," and it's just the way it is around here. And here and here, by the way, here is. Um, I'll do this. I'll put the turnips behind me. I mean, why not? I think they should show it behind me, right? Okay. Oh yes, this is yes, yeah. this is this is Kim Kite's fabric. Yeah. Um, I love her illustrations. They are so cute. They're and, really, it's um, really wonderful. Yeah, these yeah. turnips are just fabulous. Yeah, they're really good. And and the colorways, the colorways. This is great. This is this is the one we really like. Um, yeah, and then and then there's one other one. Yeah, look at these. They're really they're really wonderful. So so um so you said Ruby Star. Is that, yeah? Yes, this is this is Ruby Star Society. Um, you know, they, they I, I have to not pay attention to their fabric releases because their stuff is so adorable and I love it so much. So it's I've really spent good. so much money. <laughs> so yeah. I, I haven't been paying attention, but I'm glad that uh, some nerds pointed this out because it's very cute. It is really, really cute. Um, I don't, uh, oh, why are you, you're disappearing. Why is that? It's me, it's me, it's my fault. What, what, what's going on? Okay, there you are. Okay, I need you. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and and even though, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Support your local quilt shop. Let me put it that way, and get some, get yes. some, um, get some. Yeah, get some fabric. Get some some turnip fabric. So okay, so let's go back to this um, this quilt behind me because it's really special. And we're going to talk about it. Um, Eva, good evening, and Jan and Michal and Penny and Mother Nature. Uh, and L Riggs, thank you so much for subscribing at tier two. You've been subscribed for 15 months. That's amazing. I appreciate you. Yeah, that's right, a little champagne. A little champagne for L Riggs. God bless you. Uh, I really appreciate you. Uh, Saucy Stitcher's here and M Hicks. And Babe, Babe. Mm. Um, D Marie, yes, applause for Stephanie Cake. Indeed. Um, and Eat Your Coat and Molly Squared, Molly Squared. How is, how's Barb? That's what I want to know. Are you having, oh, you're pooped. Yes, yes. So who's who's down there in Hotlanta? Molly's there. Jill's there. 
I mean, I know other people there, but I'm trying to think of the nerds who are there. Molly, you know, Molly can tell us. Angelina, good evening. Drink wine until then. You know what? Here's what I want for Molly right now. Here's what I want for Molly. I want Molly obviously having a great time, and we've been in communication. I've gotten the 411. And right now, I want for Molly a glass of wine, her hotel room. I don't know, are you sharing? Are you sharing a hotel room with Barb? If you are, either way, it works. Barb is her mom. Um, so, so, but I want you with a glass of wine and a robe, quilt nerd, maybe some inst Instagram, you know, texting. I don't know, talk to your child, you know, your husband. <laughs> but you know, a little quilt nerd on, and then, you know, just sift, drift off into, into slumber, you know? Because what we're gonna do tonight is like, it's great. It's so much fun, it's chill, it's great. On Tuesday night, we did deep learning. We did major learning, almost like there was homework. We were learning so much and so hard. But tonight, we're gonna do the second half of the My First Quilt Show. Which, it's interesting, you know, it can't like be an annual show because, like an annual special quilt nerd episode, because people only have the one first quilt, you know? You can't like have a new first quilt next year. But, uh, but it was a fun idea that it happened on the show to share your first quilt and, you know, it was great. It was a good time. So this is the second half of, it, of that show. It's all queued up, wonderful. So it, there are fewer tonight than there were last time because we did so many last time, but but we've got that tonight. Um, and, hmm, what else? Oh yeah, I've got a quick video and we're gonna look at that first. Uh, both Dee Marie and Mary, different spelling of Mary. I don't know, Mary, I don't know if I know your screen name. I'm not sure that I know it. But uh, you also sent me the hot tip that a Sarah Mary Taylor quilt was featured on Antiques Roadshow. And there's a little video, so we're gonna watch it. Um, and I just want to say, we're not going to look at Helen LaFrance, uh, her work tonight, but Mary mentioned that on that same episode of Antiques Roadshow, there was, um, maybe I'll show you one picture. Mm -mm -mm. There was, um, also mention of artist Helen LaFrance, who, whoops, sorry about that, um, who is, uh, who, who passed away in 2020. I, I learned that tonight. Um, she was a painter. Yeah, let's just let's just look at this. She was a painter and, and a quilt maker. Um, and and she, she she made quilts, but but I had Mary couldn't find any of the quilts. She let me know about this. Uh, she couldn't find any quilts right away, and I couldn't either. But uh, but the reason I want to talk about it. Let me let me make that full screen and get small. I gotta get small. Help them small. Um, this is Helen LaFrance, and there's an exhibit right now, right now at the Speed Museum in Kentucky, in Louisville, Louisville, of Helen LaFrance, of decades of her work. It's like a, it's a survey. Okay, here we go. Speed Art Museum presents Kentucky women, Helen LaFrance. You see? Look at this. This is like very, very typical, or I should say classic, right? Helen LaFrance. So a survey of the artist's six decade career on display at the Speed, now through April 30th, 2023. You know, so often we look into these people and we find these exciting things and we're like, oh, look at this exhibit that happened in 2017. Uh, it was probably great, you know. But, um, but this is on now. It's on now through April 30th. This is a press release I found. You see, look at this wonderful painting. So um, she began painting in her 40s. You see, oh yeah, passed away in 2020 at the age of 101? What? That's amazing. Um, so yes, captured memories of small town, domestic and community life, da da da. So, so as I mentioned, oh wow, look at this. So, so we will, um, you know, we'll dive into her a little bit more because I'm, I'm feeling like I, you know, we can find quilts perhaps. But, but even if I can't find pictures of her of quilts that she made. Look at this incredible painting. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. 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 Um, so many of her paintings have feature, feature quilts on the line and so forth. And, and on this show, you know, we just like investigate things and quilts are the, quilts are the entry point for art, you know, for art and history and, and women's history. Look at this. God. Get the horses, incredible. So, uh, so yeah, so I printed out this press release. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll save it. <coughs> Pardon me. 
and uh, and we'll look at Helen LaFrance more deeply. But at the Speed Museum through April 30th, 2023, Helen LaFrance, man. Um, I have to make sure. Hang on, Stephanie. I don't know. Something's going on. I don't like it when I can't see you because, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. Zoom is being weird. It is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, start video. Well, that would. I cannot start the video because my host has disabled it. Well, I'm in the I'm in the doghouse. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's strange. But uh, oh yes, yes. Okay, you've asked me to start my video. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we yeah, go. I turned it off for a minute because it was frozen. Yeah. And then I couldn't get it to turn back on. It's just like going in and out. Anyway, that's weird. But I can see you, and I can. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so it's interesting for people to watch the tech stuff. I apologize. So anyway, so that's that's exciting and fun. So now let's look at the quilt behind me, and then we'll go to um, we'll go to the Sarah Mary Taylor video, and then we'll look at some of these first quilts that you all have made. We have really great photographs today of like photographs from the past because a lot of people made their first quilt within the last few years or within the last 10 years certainly but um there's a number of you who made your first quilt or started your first quilt you know like decades ago right for your child or for I don't know for your home or something like that so we have a few like retro photos it's really nice I really am looking forward to it okay so this look at this quilt wow wow what are we looking at uh every show starts with a different quilt behind me it's just a nice little aperitif, amuse-bouche for the rest of the thing. Uh, this, oh, we have a book giveaway tonight. We have a, a book giveaway and it is a very, it is a very, very spendy, expensive book giveaway. I'll show you what that is in just a second. Um, this book, sorry, this quilt comes from a book that I got uh, after a long time not buying any books. For the show, um, I did buy a couple, um, and I'll tell you the book in just a second, too. I know I'm sort of teasing you with things, but I have to try to order order things for you in a way that makes sense, but I want to tell you what's coming. So here, this is the quilt that, um, that, that, that this image, right, so this was what was behind me, this um, detail shot of this quilt. Uh, this quilt is by Beth Thomas Kennedy. It is called A Nuestra Señora. Hang on. Hang on. I want to get it. I want to get it right. Yeah. Uh, A Nuestra Señora, La Virgen de Guadalupe. Uh, and I'm going to read to you from the text. And of course, I'll show you the full quilt again just, just in just a second. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'll show you the full quilt again. Hang on one second. So this is this is a detail shot of of this uh, quilt. It was made in 1990. Yeah, it's 72 by 78. And let's see the full the full Monty here. Pretty cool. I'll zoom in more, but I'll leave up the full image for a second because I have a lovely chunk of text to read you. And we have a picture of the back, okay? And yeah, really good detail shots. Okay, here's what uh, the book tells us. Um, Catherine Jean Adams wrote this about this quilt and this person. Quote, by the end of the 1980s, Beth Kennedy began matching her growing love affair with surface embellishment, with her determination to express support for women through her art. Her matriarchal rituals, matriarchal rituals, an eight quilt series. Let me scoot this up a little bit. Well, back and away from the mic. Okay. Um, her eight part series, uh, eight quilt series, uh, matriarchal rituals celebrates the impact of women on culture and society. Beth began A Nuestra Señora, La Virgen, Virgen de Guadalupe, fourth in the series at a class taught by pioneering art quilt quilter Nancy Crow at the International Quilt Festival in Houston. Uh, she recalls clearly that Nancy emphasized the importance of creating quilts in a series as a way to explore variations on a specific theme. That is so interesting. Wow. Yeah. Uh, as she did with our Texas heritage, Beth based her Virgin of Guadalupe quilt on a traditional applique medallion pattern. This quilt, however, features 
striking surface embellish embellishment, surface embellishment, including a sequined icon, milagros, miracle charms, and ornaments, more than 30 small cloth and yarn dolls, a rosary, lace, dimensional flowers, and prayer cards. Beth loved making this quilt and notes that, quote, of all the quilts that I have published or shown, this is the one that has gotten the most press, unquote. A Nuestra Senora was selected for exhibition, for example, at Quilt National in 1991. Ooh, I just found the dolls. Let's zero in on these dolls. These are great. Hold on. Cloth dolls, wow. Oh, I love them so much. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Quilt National in 90, 1991 at the Dairy Barn Arts Center in Athens, Ohio. A venue for contemporary art quilts, Quilt National's international juried exhibition offers quilt artists the opportunity to show original work that possesses that, that possess the basic structural characteristics of a quilt. <laughs> the paper and sequin de depiction of La Virgen de Guadalupe at the center of A Nuestra Señora, La Virgen de Guadalupe, is one Beth acquired in Mexico in the 1960s. Let's take a look at that. This is the detail shot I showed you. Um, she was attracted to the icon because it was the only female representation in Mexican culture she could find that was not submissive. Wow, interesting. She saved the icon for the right moment, quote unquote. This quilt adding a sealant to the virgin's paper face and hands to protect them. Uh, interesting. Uh, flowers at the virgin's feet and lower right are cut from oil cloth. Oh yeah, okay, that's what that is. I was looking at that and it seems so familiar, that like motif, right? The, the art, it, the, we know that art, right? It's oil cloth. Uh, a fabric traditionally, oil cloth, used in, Mexican ho in the Mexican home. One place, Beth notes, uh, where women have power in Mexican culture. Uh, other fabrics and embellishments in the quilt include a border made from a sari of red polyester with gold flecks, and there is a, um, there's a detail shot of this in the book. This is great. This is a great detail shot. Oh God, it's gorgeous. I mean, this could be a, its own quilt, right? It's just beautiful in this, in this very particular way, in this crop. Oh, I love it. Um, dimensional flowers cut from fabric scraps from other quilt projects and stiffened with a paper-backed fusible bonding. Dolls that represent uh, those who pray to the Virgin de Guadalupe. A Guadalupe rosary and a membership pin and ribbon from the Guadalupo, Guadalupo Pan, Guadalupano Society, whose members pray to La Virgin, and an outside border made of hand-painted fabric. Really? Wow. Oh man, that's wild. I did not, I would have not, I, I mean, if I didn't know that was hand-painted, I would definitely not have recognized that as such. Interesting. Um, Beth made the quilt back. Here we have a picture of the back. Beth made the quilt back um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. using irregularly sized blocks intended for the quilt front, but never used there. Several of the block fabrics came from Mexico, including a cotton peyote painting scarf and several tissue uh, paper prayer flags, with Beth, which Beth covered with netting and bonded onto the background. She machine quilted her quilt with nylon thread. Beth considers her matriarchal rituals series the high point of her career, using commercial fabrics and one of the most joyous artistic periods of her life. Beth recalls, quote, I had never felt such joy. I loved the work and the subject. I mourned the completion of each piece, even as I rejoiced in the anticipation of, that every new one brought. Life was good. I had found my place." Unquote. When I saw this quilt in this book, I was like, well, sometimes I don't know what to start with, you know? I mean, I, I you know, I'm like, okay, no, no, maybe that, maybe this, maybe that, blah, blah, blah. No. This, this was the one. This was clearly, clearly the one. So what do you think? Nice, huh? It's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, let's see. Did I? I hope I didn't miss. It. If I missed, if you re-upped your subscribe, your subscription or anything. Hey, Auntie Sin. Migrate cats. Hi. Oh. Oh no. Migrate. 
Migrate cats, you don't like it? Oh no. Maybe I missed something. I'm, it's out of context. It's out of context. Um, Amy Pabst, hey Amy Pabst. Uh, it's good to see you, I'm so glad you're here. Um, Jan, I'm so glad to see you too. You love working in a series when making quilts, says Amy Pabst. I've been working on the same series since 2019. That is exciting. What is the series? I'm, you may have uh, answered it uh, here. Some of the small dolls are from South America, Padma says. Love it, love it, love it. Bip, Bip, hey, Bip. Thank you so much for subscribing at tier two. You've been subscribed for 17 months. I appreciate you. And you look good. You look good tonight. When don't you? Hey, wonky. Okay, so so here, uh, here, this is the book from which this comes. Comfort and Glory. I saw Steph already put the link in there. It's um, th okay. So I, I mean, I can't believe I didn't have this yet. You guys, two centuries of American quilts from the Briscoe Center. So the Briscoe Center is down in Austin, Texas. And by the way, so it's by Catherine Jean Adams. The foreword's by Carrie Bresenhan, okay, and Nancy O'Brien Puentes, the two, the forces of nature that created Quilt Market and Quilt International Quilt Festival, and prefaced by Don uh, Carlton. I don't know about this person, uh, but we'll learn because I, oh, he's the editor, okay. Okay, it's awesome, okay. Anyway, so so it's, it, this book is enormous. Look how big it is, look, it's huge. This is my head. Do you have it, Steph? Do you, you know, as, as when you showed me the cover of it earlier, I thought either my mom has that book or I'll have that book. Yes, yes. I can't remember. Yeah. I know I've, I've looked through it before, but I, I'm. It's a, it's a good book. It's it, a thick one. It, those big, those big thick ones are usually pretty good. They are. They really are. And it was so weird because when I saw the cover, I was looking for something else. Ain't that the way? And here's the book. Um, and I was like, I have that. Because I gotta say, it's not a cover that wows me. I mean, it's I'm not like I must have it now. You know, it's I don't know. And but I just kind of thought I I think my mom does have it. And you know, if I'm home in Winterset and I'm like trolling her bookshelf, trolling through her bookshelf, you know, I can get confused because we have a lot of the same books. And I think maybe I thought I had this, but but then I was like, wait a minute, the Briscoe Center because um, Joyce Gross, the great quilt historian, oh. Joyce Gross. Hey, Professor, thank you so much for following the stream. I'm so glad you're here. Um, if you're like a nerd in, of any kind, you're you're among friends. I mean, even if you don't know about textiles or quilts, I could just give it five minutes, right? I, I have a feeling. Anyway, so so um, yeah, so so I I I look to see. Oh yeah, the Briscoe Center, the great historian Joyce Gross, the quilt historian. Her papers are there. And she did some research on birth of Mexra. So I, was, I, I talked to a person at the Briscoe Center. Anyway, the point is, this is a great book. And if you use that affiliate link in the chat, we get a few, we get a few dollars, you know? Well, let's, let's be honest. We get a few dimes. We get a few dimes, but the dimes add up, people. That's right. And I need to stay in chips. The best chips that have ever chipped. They're really great. Um, and if you buy three bags right now at the Jewel, they're $3 a piece. Anyway. <laughs> So that's a great book. Use our affiliate link and get it. Now, um, I love this quilt. I think it's great. And uh, hey, Dee Dee. Mark, hi. Mark, Mark, Mark. It's so great to see you. So so that's the scoop. Now, speaking of books, before we go on to this, did anybody want to see the quilt again? I, I kind of went on, but, but I can show the full thing. Let me show the full thing. Speaking of books, I'm going to announce what book is being given away tonight. And, you know, did we mention that tonight was going to be the monthly book giveaway night last week? We didn't, because you know what? There's a lot going on. There's the trip to L.A. with my mom uh, in two weeks to see the Fabric of a Nation exhibit excerpt at the Skirball Cultural Center. If you subscribe to the show, you get to see me and my mom go through the whole exhibit privately. We're doing a private stream, and, and we have a time now, a time on March 7th, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, Pacific time, 10 a.m., March 7th. If you're a subscriber to the show, you can walk through the exhibit on a private tour of the show with me and my mom. And it's gonna be great. And that's the kind of stuff you get on Quilt Nerd. It's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty good, you know? Like if there was a show that was doing that for quilt shows around, I would probably subscribe to it. And you support like just the work that we do. You don't have to watch ads if you subscribe. And you also get entered in the giveaways. And we have a, well, this is the, 
I've got to grab an, uh, an image of this. This is a big one. This is a very big one. In fact, it's kind of like a gift. Not that I'm trying to trick anybody. <laughs> I'm not. But like, if you're a subscriber and you're a faithful Quilt Nerd supporter, sometimes you're going to get surprised by huge things like this. So Faith Ringgold, uh, there was an exhibit of um, her American, it was American People recently. It, uh, American People, it was at the New Museum. And uh, it, it was in 2022. And one of our quilt nerds, who asked to be anonymous, classy, indeed, very classy, she went and uh, she donated a copy. She don donated a copy of the book. Now, I don't know if you're watching, quilt nerd goddess, but, um, but it's time. It's finally time to give this book away. Um, it's extremely generous, and I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna tell you how much this book is worth. Okay, this book, this book, I've got an image for you. Uh, uh, it's, um, oh, oh, did we get the kitten? Did we get the kitten? The kitten, the kitten, the kitten sewing. The kitten is sewing. That means somebody gave a gift to, Kenny gifted a, a tier one subscription to Eva. Eva, oh my God, Kenny has, and, and he did it to Amy Paps too. When when someone gives a gift subscription to somebody else, the little cat sews. The little cat it works a sewing machine. Kenny, thank you so much. You, you're you're great. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And you know you know what you know what you know what Kenny did, Eva, and and Amy. He did it right before this giveaway. That's what he did to get him into the damn giveaway. Kenny, that is so cool. Like oh my god. Now that's a mensch. That's what, that's, that's a, fuck that. I mean, that is like so great. You're like, oh, there's a giveaway? Let me throw two more people in, sorry to say the F word, but I mean, that is so awesome. Kenny, you just like, woo, that was like extremely cool. Sorry, I was overwhelmed by like, that was very generous and awesome. Nice timing. You are great. Okay. It would be amazing if you won the giveaway. <laughs> we don't game these things, but. Oh, that would, I mean, my head would explode, right? Anyway, or if Eva or Amy won. So here's the book that we're giving away. This uh, book is, uh, there's even more happening. Um, there's another gift sub um, for uh, Auntie Sin. Auntie Sin gave a gift sub to mo the most disgrunt disgruntled. Okay, it's Cake, you got to say it while I pull this book up. Sorry, you tell me what's going on. I think it's. <laughs> I, yes, a most disgruntled frog. You have been gifted a uh, subscription from. Wow. Oh gosh, is it Icy Sin? Yes. Amazing. Even such generous, generous nerds. They really are. And oh, and L Riggs is doing them. You guys. Sometimes I wonder if you guys just want to see the kitten. You know, <laughs> yeah. this is like the only time that we allow a, a snapshot into Mary's little kitten sweatshop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that poor thing. She just works and works. She just never. It's on a loop. You know. Um, Auntie Sin's doing it too, and L Riggs, you're doing it. Hey Susan, to get people into the into the into the giveaway. I mean, E Model and uh, Dalanana and and Muck Rulick. All of you people, all of you. Some of you are lurkers. Some of you just dropped in. Stink Beetle Boy. You know what? Let me just tell you, we had Mayor McCheese the other day, and I was like, I think Mayor McCheese is going to cause problems because you know we get we get all kinds in here and. I, we love them all, right? And I thought Mayor McCheese was gonna. You know what Mayor McCheese did? It's a live stream. We can do what it, we can. I, I know. I, what, what? We're just chatting, okay? And this is important. This is important. So I know we have things to do. But Mayor McCheese came in, and he was kind of. He it was during the co-working thing, and he was kind of bombing the chat. I mean, he was he was he was elbowing him his way into the chat. He was saying a lot of things. You know, a lot of chats. Hey, Deborah. And he was kind of he was kind of flooding the chat with comments, and I was like, Mayor McCheese, like, and and when I was ch chatting with him, people were cool. He got into some chat with Stephanie Cake, and and it was and it was great. You were talking about the Simpsons. You handled it awesome. And I was like, between Mayor McCheese and Stephanie Cake, like we've got lunch, you know. And I was like, but Mayor McCheese, like, don't like fire on the chat. Just like you know, we love you, but like, don't be weird, you know. Mayor McCheese goes away. Hours later, he comes back and he's like, hey, I'm a small creator. And he said, I'm a small creator. And I know, I know it's like not cool to like chat, to like flood the chat. So thanks for welcoming me. Y'all are great. I was like, 
And and Pump Daddy six nine six nine six nine is one of our favorite. Well, I think he's lurking. I mean, I, when he showed up one day, I was like, "This is gonna be trouble." But you know what? He's a gentleman and a scholar. And Twitch is amazing with troll stuff. Listen, the whole my whole point in saying this now, was you were assuming yeah. that Pump Daddy is a he. I know. We don't know. <laughs> I know. It's unfair. It's unfair to gender people if you don't know. You know what? You're you're correct. They, they have turned out to be a really good-hearted person. And actually, my bit, yeah, punk dad. I mean, the daddy part <laughs> tells me that maybe my. But Mayor McCheese. I mean, can a I I believe Mayor Mal Mc, Yes, Mayor McCheese is definitely uh, a man, and I believe oh, Mayor McCheese oh, may be Canadian. Really. I followed Mayor McCheese, but I haven't had a chance to look at his streams. So I love it. And I was about to say, like, a mayor can be any, you know, it can be a, a male, a female, a friend beyond the binary. We don't know. And and but the Mayor McCheese is, yeah, it is, it's yes. So so the reason I say all of this, I'm having a good time tonight. I'm sorry. What can I say? Stink Beetle Boy, Stink Beetle Boy, and Ash attacks roommate's mom. I mean, what can I say? Those those names, they are less common in their sort of theme. <laughs> it's different than what we usually get in here. We usually get like, you know, like Little Bird Stitch, right? Stephanie Cake, you know, Quilt Nerd Show, stuff like that. But in my experience, I mean, we've got like, I mean, Chris Mess, I haven't seen him in a minute, but he's around. He's our, he's our resident tattoo artist. And we've got, well, anyway, I could go on about the very interesting people that watch this show. But anyway, my point is, you're now subscribers. I hope you stick around. And if you win this book that I'm going to show you now, God, I just, I can only hope, my new friends, that if, if, that if you like it, that your life is, like, enhanced. And if you don't need it or want it or care about it, Give it to somebody who 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 would like it, because I got to tell you, this is a fancy book. It's a fancy art book, and Faith Ringgold is this incredible, incredible. She is sorry, um, an incredible painter. She's a legend, and we talk about her on the show because she made quilts that hung on the wall. And you know, one of the things that she did, she made story quilts, and and one of the things was she couldn't get published. She wanted to publish her writing. This is like in the '60s, '70s, '80s. She's I mean, she's like I don't know, '90 something, still making art in New York. She couldn't get anything published because nobody would publish her stuff. And so she started making art where she had words on her, her art and her quilts. She's like, well, if nobody will publish me, I'll just publish my damn self. And that's like, so that, I think that's pretty amazing, you know? And, and there's a lot of amazing things about her, but I mean, this, it's a great book and it's sealed. Like the, the quilt nerd who donated this, I, I didn't take this out of the, out of the paper. I mean, out of the plastic. It retails for, $80, $79.95 US, $100 Canadian, $59.95 UK. I could go on all day. The most comprehensive survey to date of the work of Faith Ringgold, whose groundbreaking art and political activism span more than 60 years, accompanies a major retrospective exhibition at the New Museum, New York. And the Washington Post says, quote, Ringgold emerges not just as a powerful advocate for racial justice and the equality of women, but as a prophet unquote. Fabulous. So at the break, Stephanie Cake is going to um, draw for a name. And if you, I mean, if you subscribe to the show, you're in the mix. And it's just one of the perks, you know, we try to give give you because um, I, having your support is, is really important. But you should get stuff for it, you know what I mean? Aside from the show itself. So that's that. All right. Oh, boy. A most disgusting frog. Oh, my God. A most dis disgruntled frog. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> a most disgusting frog. That's somebody else. A most disgruntled frog. I highly approve of this name. I think it's great. Okay. So, hey Kelly, here we go. Let's look at some. Let's look at some quilts from people. Okay. So, so this is really fun. Here we go. Stephanie Bridgewater. Bridgewater in VA. Um. We're doing. We're doing your quilt first. Okay. So we've got like, I don't know, like 12, like 12 people who, who, who wanted to, when, when prompted, send in their, um, their first quilt that they ever made. Now, people who watch the show, not everybody makes quilts. Some people don't make quilts at all. Some people aren't history people. They just, I don't know, they found this thing and they're like, I, I, I like these people, you know? That wacky uh, Fonz 
girl is she's a gas. Um, <laughs> she's gas. Um, she's got gas. I don't know. No, that was crude. Okay, so anyway, so 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 not everybody makes quilts, but some people do. And sometimes we show what you make. So Stephanie Bridgewater. So the picture is a little bit fuzzy, but I have two images from Steph, and we're going to look at both of them while I tell you what she had to say about this. She says, quote, <laughs> she started, yeah, yeah, I'm late. <laughs> Not sure if you need content. I'll throw these out there. Um, my first quilt, actually, is a toss-up, as I worked on both at the same time. Finished the 12 uh, and a half inch blocks first. Okay, that's the next picture. But started the Christmas tree skirt first. Oh, okay, finished the blocks first, but started this first. The Christmas tree skirt is hexagons sewn with a fold over binding and then sewed together. Believe it or not, I only had to purchase a small amount of fabric for this quilt. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is, <laughs> it is hard to believe. It's interesting. <laughs> and then she says, I like ample Christmas tree skirts. I want to see the skirt out to the edge of the lowest branches. Fun fact, the hole for the tree trunk actually makes a great neck hole to turn the skirt into a cape that I could wear. Happy accident. That's the best thing I've heard definitely all day. Um, maybe for more time than that. Um, it's double-sided as a result of the way it's constructed. Another happy accident. And I know the floor pictures are not at all sexy, in all caps, but it shows the five inch hex size multiplied a lot. Um, I think that, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, wait a minute now, wait a minute. Hold on now. I had, I did have, to be fair. All my stuff organized and then, no, it's organized. I think that's all you sent me, Steph. But the blocks, but you, you said you made, finished the 12 and a half inch blocks. Are you there, are you here? You're here, I saw you, didn't I? It's just odd because. Yeah, she's here. Okay, where the, these blocks though? These blo am I missing a picture? I need to, I need to make sure because I see two sublime hexagon situations, situation type deals. But then, but I, let me just go into the because you mentioned two point two and a half inch. Sorry, it's a long day. Two and a half inch blocks, but I don't see a picture with that. I see a picture with that. Um first quilt Stephanie okay I think I think we're okay are you seeing anything anything different down there Steph that's it right I love this I mean I love that you said you could wear it as a cape that's what I would do <laughs> and I like how it's around an office chair <laughs> I just noticed that amazing Amazing, love it. Okay, and the, yeah, they're they're beautiful. I mean, I've you know I've never done a hexagon quilt. I never have. I never have. Cake, you've probably done like a zillion hexagon projects, I've done right? Some small piece. Yeah, I've done some small pieces, but yeah. um, yeah, I I I don't know if I've ever seen. And this is this is me just not paying attention, but hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen a Christmas tree skirt made out of hexagons. Yeah, it's probably a completely common thing that I just have just missed, but I love it. It's fabulous. It's and, a, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all, all Christmas tree skirts definitely double as capes. I mean, it's just. I, yes, they do. And I had never been alerted. But but truly, like, I want to comment on the patchwork and on the design. Yeah. And somebody who said you're, the, the um, uh, you can see the stash in the background. This is very good. This is classic. Um, and also, uh, but I want to just compliment you on your fabric choices. This plaid. This green, this red, I mean, you did a great job, I feel, of picking really great contrast. You know, you've got the Christmas tree green, pine green, whatever, and then you've got the red, so it's red and green, but then you've got that plaid, that like flannelly plaid. It's great, it's, it's joyful, it's holiday, it's luscious, and this looks like candy. So, I love it. It looks like little dipping Dots or something. <laughs> Don't say hot is high praise for, for me. Uh, it's wonderful. It's great. You're the best. Very, very well done. Yes, the choice of shape. Fabric is gorgeous. Babe, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> joyous fibers. Hey, joyous fibers. Joyous fibers. That is for you. And I think you know why. Okay. Oh, it's cake. I didn't need, I just, I, I've got these queued up and this is what came up next. 
Stephanie Cake, this is your first quilt. So I guess we got the two Stephanies here together. Uh, this is Stephanie Cake's first quilt ever. Now, I enjoyed very much seeing where this person started. Although you were, but you were stitching before, right? I mean, was your, you, you were sewing things a long time, right? No. I technically started sewing when I was about eight, but you know, my mom got me started with things like little cross stitch projects yeah. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I made my clothes during, in high school. So mm. I was not a quilter though. I was a very bad quilter. Really? R really, were you? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure that you, I'm sure that you feel that way. <laughs> but anyway, but what you had to say about your quilt is really, really great. Um, hang on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You described it as a soup, yes. Here we are. <laughs> Stephanie Cake writes, a floppy, quote, sorry, quote, a floppy, unstable soup of drapery fabrics, my own clothes, purloined quilting fabric, purloined, purloined, purloined. Amazing. Purloined quilting fabric, my mom's stash, vintage garment scraps from my best friend's grandmother. Oh, no, boyfriend. Boyfriend's grandmother? BF. Okay, she's BF. BF's grandmother. And a few fabrics I bought myself. It is tied, not quilted. Uh, and I either thought that tying it closer than every three feet was enough, or I got tired of the tying process. <laughs> the backing is what can best be described <laughs> as batik cheesecloth. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Oh, it's so great. Look at that's a little Dutch shoe. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back to this. We've got drapery fabrics, your own clothes. Please tell me so you had a dress. Please tell me you had a dress think, with the Dutch cloth. No, okay. I think the Dutch shoe, that's some vintage fabric from, my boyfriend's grandmother just one day, she was she was famous for just pulling crazy stuff out of like, yeah. I don't know where, her yeah. attic, her basement, yeah. uh, whatever. She drops this garbage bag in front of me one day and says, do you want this? I'm gonna throw it out if you don't. Oh, and wow. I looked inside and it's all this cool fabric. And I was like, oh, I need it. So cool. But unfortunately, some of it was rather unstable because there's some of those blocks in there are just shredded and it, yeah. had, it was just age, you know, and, and being washed a million times when I was in college. Here, your little feet. And, um, yeah, this, that would be my son holding oh, that quilt up. That's great. That's and yes, I do still have it. This picture was oh. taken like a couple weeks ago. You know what? It is really great. And I got to say, it's very like boho, like anthropology. I mean, to me, it just seems very chic. I mean, it, seem, it seems, it's interesting. It seems timeless in that way that the kind of like hippie, I mean, it's a little, it's a little bohemian hippie. And, and that, that style, I mean, it's just yeah, always. Yeah, that was, that was my vibe. Yeah, it was it really? Was it really? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, uh, this was circa this was circa eighty nine ninety. Oh really? Wow. Yeah, and I took it to college with me. Yeah, and um, I love. I do this still have fabric. it, but I use it to protect my other quilts. That's good. That's a really so, good. So like, I don't want to hang my other quilts right over the banister because I don't want them to come in contact with. Yep. You know. Yep. So I I use it to cover the banister. You know what? If if you ever were to do it, and this goes for anybody, like in the Great Depression era and in times of economic hardship or just being super thrifty, you know, people would use old quilts as batting for new quilts. I mean, I would be very interested to, to be able to talk to someone who did that. And like, if this ever gets so ratty that you're like, I don't know, man, like, I think this is dish rags, you know, it'd be, inter it'd be interesting, right? If you're gonna throw it out, like, it would be an interesting, especially, I literally just said especially, you know, especially, for, if, but for somebody who really can, you really know your way around a sewing machine and like a needle and thread, like you, you, you have the skills. It'd be interesting to see like how you would approach that. I'm not saying you should sew this into another quilt, but like if that ever would come up where you had a quilt that was like bound for glory, if you will, like what would that be like? Why would you approach that? I mean, I don't know because you know I've heard all those stories. Yeah. I've never, well, I think I've been to a place where somebody had a quilt that had a quilt inside. Yeah, um, but I mean, I've I've never come across one. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a fascinating idea, and I'm yep. this quilt absolutely would be perfect for that yeah, because yeah. why it has no quilt stitches in it. <laughs> right. It has about I don't know five ties. <laughs> That's about yeah, it. yeah, there aren't many. It's ties. true. <laughs> It's almost a sheet, let's be honest. Yeah, and it actually doesn't have a binding. It's That's the backing. Oh, over. okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
know, so it's not even bad. It would be so easy to just like clip one stitch and that, that quilt would fall apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God bless it. It's like baby doll dresses too. I'm thinking about the early 90s. and Yeah, but it's interesting. And someone else was saying, um, oh, Angelina said, this is your guardian quilt. I love it. Mother Nature says, I'd like to know how to do that, right? Like how to, how to do that. Dee Marie, uh, my grandmother used a wool blanket for a bat. Yeah, I mean, it happens, man. Um, is Pemberito up in here? Oh my God, Pemberito. Mademoiselle Larry, it's great to see you too. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. The picnic quilt, oh, I love it. Babe, you always say such lovely things. Okay, um, Hope, Hope, is Hope here? I think Hope is. The, look at this quilt, are you, I mean, are you kidding me? And, and, and look at the snow, I mean, that's, now that's snow. That's like Molly squared Buffalo, New York style snow. That is snow so high. Okay, let's just do some forensics here before we look at the Okay, thing. now compare what you just saw of my quilt and now look at this beautiful tie quilt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are more ties. It's true, there's more ties. Um, but I mean, th th that's a door to a shed or something back there, right? And I, I mean, I see snow up to almost the doorknob, okay? Okay. Um, somebody trudged out. We can see we can see the footprints in the snow. And somebody trudged out there, and her name was Hope. And uh, hey, Kitty, um, and 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 took this picture, which that alone makes it really awesome. So Hope is the person responsible for this lovely quilt. And Hope says this, and I have three pictures to share with you. Um, we, yeah, okay. Hope says, quote. I thought I didn't have any pictures of this quilt and did not want to go out into the snow and take one. <laughs> awesome, now we get the story. But today was warmer, so out I went. So this wasn't long ago. I'm glad I did, because now I have a proper photo of my first quilt. Yay, yay. I made this four patch in 2012, and it has been on my bed every day since, until just recently, when I decided it was in serious need of repair, and I needed to slow its demise. I debated downgrading it to a dog blanket, but then decided I might try some kind of repair instead. I made this quilt from old clothes and a bag of scraps my mom gave me when I first started talking about quilting. I made the top, and when mom came for a visit, she showed me how to tie it. I used dark purple sheeting for the back, and we spread it out on the dining room and tied it together. Then I remembered we had taken some photos. Oh my God. So I spent some time scrolling through photos and reminiscing until I found them. Hope, hope. <laughs> oh my God. I, I mean. I love this. I love it. I'm done. That's it. That's the, that's the, that's, that's Pete Quilt Nerd. I mean, it doesn't, you know, a Faith Ringgold book giveaway, you know, the announcement of a museum show, a museum show and exhibit. My favorite chips, wine, first quilts of people. Come on. And this picture, throw the internet away. It's over. This is wonderful, Hope. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And there's another picture. Well, sorry, let's look at the quilt. I just wanted to look at the faces of the people who are cuddling up in the quilt. Now, here's, this is good. If you have a quilt that you make and the person that you give it to is present, this is the pose. Like the selfie, like the, the classic selfie is the, that duck face ridiculousness. This is the pose when you give somebody a quilt. You're like, okay, I'm so glad you like your quilt. And they're like, I love this quilt. And you're like, cool, get on the couch with me pull it up to your chin and we'll take the picture. And they're like, do we have to do it? Yeah, yeah, you do. Oh, this is the back. Oh my God, it's so great. <gasps> this picture, oh my God. Your mother, oh my God, I love your mother so much. Look at her little face. Oh, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> oh my God, it's so great. Okay, sorry, Hope. Oh, Hope, you're so beautiful and perfect. You're like, you're, you're just, how did you know? How did you know that this photograph and the quilt that you made and took a picture with your mom, it's this, okay, it's just anyway, 
you knew somehow that this was made for a bigger audience because it's it's really really lovely and i love i love the white ties on the back you know it's interesting i mean this is a very like we we talk a lot about you know classic traditional quilts right and i think about rosie lee tompkins and i think about quilts that came out of g's ben i mean that's a very artsy way to tie a quilt a lot of people don't do what you did which is leave the ties a little bit longer on the back but you did i don't know if i saw hope tonight hey your coat i don't know if i saw her in here so fun hi um saucy hi so i'm not I, I don't know if if hope you're in here but i mean i just can't hats off i mean it's just really really cool it's really cool the back of the quilt is really cool and the front is totally gorgeous and it's your first quilt and it's like 10 years old and you have pictures with your mom cuddled up with it it's fabulous it's amazing it's very That's pretty much a perfect quilt situation yeah. in my opinion it's perfect it's perfect it doesn't get better than that it's fantastic um okay linda <gasps> linda okay let me find linda's stuff Okay, Linda, okay, yes, yes, yes. Linda's a woman of few words. Well, I mean, not that few. So one, a couple people didn't say anything. I think Kenny was like, I made this for a friend or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's got mystique for days. Hey, Wanda, thanks for coming by. Um, here's what Linda has to say about her first quilt. Thank you for sending it in, Linda. Linda says, here are pictures of my first quilt. Created after taking a class at my local quilt store, learning one quilt block, uh, I went home and made several more. I sewed them all together and showed up the next day at the store with the completed top the next day. Uh, that was my comment. The ladies at the quilt store were impressed with my work. I paid them to do the quilting on their computerized machine. And then I put the binding on and used my embroidery feature on my brother machine to create the label. It was a gift for a friend of mine for the birth of her son. Linda, hell yeah. Let's take a look at that label, by the way. Hunter Kip, 11-16-2013. Wow, that, he just had his birthday. He just had his 10th birthday. Linda, um, I love this, and I think what we have learned about you is that you, you, you fell hard. You fell hard for the quilt thing, because if you started make, making quilts 10 years ago, and now you're watching this show, and you like finished your quilt in, I don't know, hours, um, yeah, you got bit hard. You got a bad girl. This is really nice. It's really, really nice. And um, and I'm really happy that you have such a nice quilt store near you, a, a really good place to go. And obviously they were impressed with your, your um, not punctuality, that's the wrong word, with your, um, it starts with a P, precociousness, with your precociousness. It's wonderful. It's like, you know, it's Hunter's quilt, right? Hunter Kip. Very well done. Indeed. Indeed. Is that your purse? I like your purse. <laughs> okay. Is that a personal question? Is that your, Linda, is that your purse? Um, it's beautiful and it's fantastic and you are right where you need to be because uh, it's awesome. Hey, Gamer Granny, I'm Hex. Um, Wonky Quilter was just, was just like you. She took a class and made a quilt the next day. It happens. A natural talent, babe, you said it. A natural talent indeed. Ooh, okay, this is good. So I got this one and then one more and then we'll take a quick break. Um, and cake will do the cake break. And I didn't ask you about if you've got any news to report. You may you may not have done news, and that's okay. You can just kibitz with the people. That is totally fine. Um, but whatever happens, Stephanie Cake takes over the airwaves while I take a quick break. Um, so as, yeah, so we'll do that. So so here, I mean this picture. So this is Mary, Mary, uh, and I'm not sure Mary of your of your screen name so if you're out there but if but if you want to lurk that's totally fine but i'm not sure you sent a lovely email oops you do that sometimes you sent a lovely email uh about the sarah mary taylor oh we were gonna watch that video we'll we'll, we'll watch it at the end of the show it's very very short on antiques roadshow uh i forgot about that but um you, you sent a tip in about the the quilt being featured on antiques roadshow and you also sent in this wonderful picture of you working on your quilt um, but I don't know your screen name so you can lurk as long as you please um, but if you want to make yourself known you can so all I know about this all I know about this particular quilt hang on 
me just make sure I have everything. Um, is, sorry. I mean, there wasn't, there, there wasn't much. Let me just, I printed off all my stuff and now I don't know. Okay, here we go, here we go. My very first quote. Okay, Mary says, yeah, it's just, it, there wasn't any text. It was just the, the subject line. And it says, my very first quilt, circa 1978, started in 1978 and completed in 1991. So I believe that that was Mary in 1991 up there that we just saw. And I think this is 1978 started in 1970 because look at this little look at this little troublemaker you know I think that's what I think that's what we're dealing with here I think this is Mary in 1978 and it is fabulous I would like to know where the hoodie is and I would like if it's in your closet some people save things I like the hoodie I'll make you an offer it's great <laughs> it's really great um this is so good you know what I mean it really looks Mennonite Amish you know it's it's a it's a diamond in a square no it's not a diamond in a square what am I thinking of what am I thinking what is it oh my god I mean it's so simple but like it's it's not a diamond in a square and it's not a lone star trip obviously. around yeah, the world trip around the world trip around the world's That's usually square about. but 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 probably you're probably right yeah I mean I think this is a variation I think that's what this is yeah yeah so here she is, she's like, I made this. And then later, when I know more about the world and I've maybe had children or started my career, I definitely have a very large cat. <laughs> I mean, I just noticed the cat. He's, she is gorgeous. And, and maybe it's just the angle. <laughs> maybe it's just the angle. But I can tell a couple things. You love this cat. This cat is loved. You're like looking lovingly at the cat. And the cat is like, I know, I'm beautiful. And you're, you're hand quilting this on a hoop. Oh, Mary, Mary. Again, I'm all for the, fa the fashion choices. You're still wearing awesome red striped hoodie things. You know, you know who you are. I like that, but no, but the quilt is absolutely gorgeous. And it's interesting, like, what is this book open? I was, I was wondering if it was like a quilt, a how to hand quilt thing, but it, it's not, I don't think, I don't think. This, this is a great picture. And you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Get, get people in your life to take pictures of you while you're sewing. You know, like just like that. Isn't that great to have that picture? You know, we don't think about that. Hey, Suzanne, thanks for coming by. We don't think about having pictures of us just doing normal things or just taking a picture of your kitchen, like as it is right now. Crazy, right? But like, I took a picture of this office the other day just because like in 20 years I'll be like oh my god do you remember that well and now we live in this palace <laughs> what a hovel but we made it work you know that kind of thing <laughs> but you know I want to remember so just take a picture of your environment and have somebody take a picture of you sewing w wouldn't that be nice to have someday and remember what Fran Lebowitz says every picture of you when you were younger is a good picture that's right uh, it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous thank you Mary very much and here we have Mod Art Quilt. That's right, Mod Art Quilt has sent us this. And I mean, the more I know about the quilt nerds, the more the more I love the more I love you. Look at these glasses. Are you kidding me? I feel like you will like these glasses, Cake. I feel like this is a thing. Um, Mod Art Quilt says, and by the way, there's a there's a website, modartquilt.com. I did not know. I have not visited it yet because I was putting all my notes together modartquilt.com it's jesse jesse's a nerd oh 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 i love that look at that pocket um mod art quilt jesse says first quilt i ever made 15 years ago from my daughter's baby clothes and old blue and burgundy red velvet curtains yeah on the 1960s brother boutique machine my grandma gave me hell yeah wow wow oh my god did you cry? <laughs> Did you shed tears getting it together, Jesse? I don't know, but it is great. It's so great. Lots of tied quilts, you know? That's why I love a tied quilt. Oh, this chair. 
let's talk about this chair. That is really cool. Um, I love this quilt. I love it. You said it's your daughter's baby clothes and old blue and burgundy red velvet curtains. Wow. On a 1960s machine my grandma gave me. It's fabulous. I have two other pictures. <laughs> oh, and look how far she's come, right? That's a cool quilt on the wall. Look at this. What a nice place to sew. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. The jeans and the little, and I wonder, you know what? I bet, I bet some little kid loved that little pocket, right? To tuck little, you know, secret things in, right? A little acorn, a little doll, something like that. A penny. Those are fun. Oh, and I like that little patch. Maybe there was a, a tear in the jeans and you patched it up. It's just great. It's perfect. It's a perfect quilt. I love it. I love it. I love it. Just one other picture. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The machine. Look at that. That's the machine. Oh man. That thing is awesome. Oh, boutique is the, is the, is the model name. Brother Boutique. A brother, does anybody else recognize this? A matchbox car, yes, Mark. Yes, exactly, a matchbox car. It would fit perfectly, it would have fit perfectly. Um, the workspace is great, yes. The examining of the background, yeah, Eva. I get that from Eric, he's always like pausing the TV, like if we were watching a reality show. We do, love after lockup, it's amazing. And he's like looking at like the environment, <laughs> it's really fun, anyway. Um, yeah, looking around at people's spaces is so much fun. Um, bat oh my God, Jesse. Jesse says the background quilt went to QuiltCon 2017. We just talked about QuiltCon 2017 the other day, didn't we? It looks like a creamsicle, Angelina says. It does look like a creamsicle. Let's, uh, I wanna just point out this quilt again. This was at QuiltCon in 2017. Wabam, hell yeah, amazing amazing and uh yeah this is like yeah it's like an yeah it's like orange juice and I really really like my haptic sort of uh I don't know not ASMR but like the the the, the part of me that wants to watch crayons being made you know those like soothing videos you know what I mean where they're like cutting fudge and like cubes like I want to I want to I want to I want to switch that thing over to the other side bad <laughs> Really bad. Yeah, these mid-century sewing machines are so fantastic, and I know there's a lot of nerds that love these. Yeah. So yes, this is like you know quilt porn, and then you've got the sewing machine porn here. <laughs> yep, totally. Listen, if anybody wants to do a spinoff sewing machine nerd, do it. I'm serious. I will tune in. I will tune in. I don't even care about sewing machines like deeply, like you know what I mean. Like I don't. It's not like a thing, but I'll I'll watch. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's it. We've got like, I don't know, like six left or something like that of these. They're wonderful. I hope you come back to see the others and we'll, I mean, we're gonna wrap it up. But for now, we're gonna take a quick break and be back with more Quilt Nerd in just a second. Cake, you ready for this? I am. She's ready, she's ready. Okay, be right back. So I will, um, I will entice you all with just a little bit of Dr. Dutton and then I'll do the drawing. So, um, I really haven't had a whole lot of time to devote to Dr. Dutton the past week or two. I've been, you know, life happens, but I um, think I'm getting closer to getting to the museum and, and getting to look at the treasure trove of, of Dutton's stuff. Um, but I wanted to share another, <laughs> another bizarre Dutton thing. Um, that man was always up to something. I, you know, I would give my eye teeth to have actually met him because he's just so, so interesting. So this is from a, um, okay, this is from, oh no, it's the Baltimore Sun, 1961. So this is, Dr. Dutton at this point is in his 90s because he passed away in 66. Um, and he was, I think, 98. So, oh, Kelly, oh gosh. Uh, I don't have time right now, but Dr. Dutton uh, is like the godfather of, uh, of all things quilty. Um, Google him, uh, check him out in the Quilters Hall of Fame. Um, there's a really comprehensive explanation of who Dr. Dutton is if you, if you just Google the Quilters Hall of Fame. So, 1961, this is an article says, uh, and I, I'm thinking this might be a column um, called like grandma used to make. 
And the title is Recipes and Family for Century. In the era of frozen and canned food, there is at least one Baltimorean who thinks young women miss a great deal by not trying out the recipes of their mothers and grandmothers. You kind of want to smack him for that. He is Dr. W.R. Dunton Jr., retired psychiatrist at Shepherd and Enoch Pratt Hospital, who now lives on North Calvert Street. Now, at this point, Dr. Dutton had moved from the house where he lived when he published his book, and he's living um, at this point by himself because his second wife had passed away, but he's living in this co-op that is today a pretty ritzy place. So I think Dutton was pretty comfortable in his, his old age. It goes on to say Dr. Dutton, who was born in 1868, says his his interest in food goes a long way back. Me too, doctor. He remembers that his mother was a very good cook. She got the recipe for angel food cake from New York in the 1970s. Dr. Dutton's father had a special pan made for it. The pan was constructed on three legs so the cake would drop out. Um, I think that we've all seen these pans, so I don't know what the deal with, um, with the special, specially made pan was. Um, as a small boy, Dr. Dutton spent his summers on the Manasquam River. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Manasquam River in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Charlie, the driver of the beach wagon there, often referred to a character named Aunt Wimpy. And I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right. It's spelled W E A M. P-I-E. So thinking it could be Wimpy, it could be Wimpy. I'm not, I'm not sure. So anyway, <laughs> Dunn never forgot this name. And when he was 14, he published a small recipe booklet under the title Aunt Wimpy's Recipe Book. The recipes originally belonged to his Aunt Jane Gemmel, or Gemmel, who worked for the Treasury Department in Washington. Her recipe for stewed kidneys had been in the family for 100 years, Dr. Dutton says. I've never heard of anyone else cooking them that way. Most people simply broil them. And this article goes on to talk about some other things, but uh, the recipe for stewed kidney is there. I will gladly share it. Ew. I would rather eat nothing less than <laughs> stewed kidney. Ugh. Um, yes, yes, you, you too can eat like Dunton. Um, apparently, you know, besides this, this booklet that he made when he was 14, he, um, he apparently had a collection of recipes and he, of course, Dunton loved to donate. He donated these recipes somewhere. Um, yes. What did he not do? Dean Marie, I wish, I, I think it would be easier to make a list of what did Dunton not do yeah. uh, because he, he was so involved in so many different things. Yeah, the angel food, you know, my mother has one of those and my grandmother had one and you like release the spring and it drops out. I think even my grandmother's might have not even, you didn't even release something. It just fit together like as a, anyway, Dutton's father, maybe he was the inventor of that pan. Who knows? <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, it would not surprise me that Dutton's father <laughs> invented some cake pan that we all use today. <laughs> So with that said, yeah, let the cake not. do this drawing yeah, because yeah. I know you guys are probably anxious to know who is going to win that awesome Faith Wrinkles book. Um, it really is special. Okay, here it comes. Let me go to a the spreadsheet and I know you guys like a sound effect. Yay! <laughs> that's me making this. That's me making the spreadsheet randomized. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I don't know how to do that, so there's many things <laughs> Stephanie does that's, that are really important, and even that, like. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. I think let me just double check. I gotta make sure. Okay, okay this is what this is what it is. Let me uh, go okay. over here. Yeah. Let me look see at this. if they're here tonight. I don't know if they are. I haven't seen them. Yeah. No, I think they probably watch the replay recordings because they, they the replay haven't game? seen them in a while. Yes. But Peace Love Puppies, oh, my friend, Peace Love you Puppies. have won the Faith Ringgold book. Peace Love Puppies. <gasps> Peace Love Puppies. You know what? You're a faithful supporter, like so many people watching the show, whether they watch it live or on the replay. Gang, gang. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. You won big, kid. You really did. This is a very, this is very nice. And you know, the coolest thing about it, aside from it being... I mean, I, there's quilts on, I mean, it's really a nice book. I know, I have one as well. Um, this, it was donated by a quilt nerd. 
I, this book was donated. I mean, a quilt nerd purchased this book and sent it to me to give away on the show. And this is not the first time this kind of thing has happened. It's it's so great. And so it's like a double happiness thing. It really is. And and anybody who, you know, if you ever I mean, if you ever feel like doing that, I mean, the, this is the mo this is what happens, right? Is that like and you can be you can I can say who donated it if you want. There's no no shame or harm in that, you know, if you like want to say like, "Hey, I was here and I want to donate this." Or you can just do it, you know, you can just send it. But, but I mean, you can, you can share, you can share the love with the audience in a way that's, that's very creative. And, and that's what this person did. And, and so thank you so much to the person who, who purchased this book for the giveaway for the audience and peace, love puppies. I mean, champers, ducks, all the things. I mean, that's what we should play. Yeah. I don't want to just leave the toot toot to just be once a month, but I mean, when someone wins something, definitely the toot toot, toot toot, and you have to do this. Yeah, way to go, very well done. I will send it so, to you. So peace love puppies, if you are watching the video on demand after hours, I will reach out to you. I think I saw you on the disco recently, so I know you're there. Good, oh yeah, yeah, and if you subscribe, you get access to the Discord. We call it the disco. Um, you have to be, oh, I keep meaning, Robin wants me to say this and, and I should have said it before, but it, you, you you need to be subscribed for three months, right? Three months, this is a new rule. We have to have new rules. We have to set things in place to make the show healthy and strong, right? So you get access to the Discord um, and that's where we hang out and share pictures and people who are at QuiltCon right now, who are quilt nerds, they have like a discussion going in their own channel, right? Or there's, there's, there's a discussion on the disco, you know, so you can connect with people and, and, and share images and talk and chat and DM and all that stuff on our quilt nerd disco. But, you, and, and you get that when you're a subscriber, but you need to be subscribed for three months before you have access to the disco. And that kind of just, that makes sense, right? It makes sense that it's it's a community. It's a it's a very safe place to be, um, and so we want people who are, you know, committed to the thing, right? It's not that you have to prove yourself. It's that we, you know, it's a community that we really care about, and we really, I want to protect. Yeah, actually, it has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm saying it because I love this community and I want to protect you. And so, if you're around and you're like, I'm super into this. Um, you could appeal, appeal to us. If you're like, I, I'm re-upping my membership for a second month, do you think I could have access to the disco? Chances are pretty good. Robin slash me slash Stephanie will be like, okay. But if I, if I you know what I mean? To that, I know Robin, yeah. what Robin does is she doesn't like, if you are, if you are in the position where you have to subscribe every month, yeah. you know, we understand okay. finances, yeah, yeah. but she's not like kicking you off the day your subscription ends. She <laughs> gives everybody a little grace period, you know, to give you time. Yeah. If you know, if you kind of yeah. have to, like I do sometimes rob Peter to pay Paul, oh. it's not just a quilt oh, block. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's really good. Rob Peter to pay Paul. It's not just a quilt block. End of the month. <laughs> Or beginning of the month, yeah, exactly. So, so, but that's kind of the deal. So, so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Discord and all that stuff. Angelina, I mean, uh, uh, Angelina said, "Congratulations!" It was the last congratulations I read. Two piece of puppies. Way to go! All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is one of our own, Susanna, Susanna Johns also known as Pi, she uh, may be back in the States, you know, in a few months. I hope so. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? Maybe not for, but, but she's going to come back and, and be around for a, a minute at least. And I, I would love that. I think she should come over and be on the show and you, Cake and everybody and Robin. Okay. So Susanna, this is her first quilt. We only have one picture of it, but here it is. It's so great. And the style shot, can I just say? I love it. I mean, you showed the backing too, Susanna. Susanna. This, okay, Susanna says, quote, this is a picture of my first quilt. I started it in high school. It was in a mag, I love that she made her first quilt in high school. It was, it was in a magazine and the pattern was called Quilt in a Weekend, which is hilarious <laughs> because it took much longer than a weekend to complete. Um, it seemed simple enough, even though I had never quilted before. I bought all the fabric and started right away and promptly lost interest. <laughs> I hauled it across the country a few times when moving, but didn't pick it up again for ages 
nearly a decade and a half. Finally, in 2019, when preparing to move to Kuwait, I was going through UFOs and decided I needed to either finish it or pass it on. I decided to finish it, so finally I did. I passed it on to my mom and I told her to give it away rather than uh, take it with me to Kuwait or pack it away. She wisely kept it, knowing I would someday want to see it again. It's definitely not perfect, and I've learned a lot more about quilting since finishing this project. However, I'm definitely glad she kept it. Uh, same. Susanna, it's so great. It's really great, and I gotta say, it's not just the photograph that I appreciate vis-a-vis -vis the backing. The backing, I mean, I'm gonna say it. Like, the piecing's awesome. I love, I love this like gingham situation type deal that you're working with here, but that backing almost makes this cool for me. This, this deep indigo drama on the back. So when you're making the bed, when you're turning the quilt over, when you're, you know, that's very cool. And, and I love this deep blue with this white binding. It's sending me. I, I, I love it. I think it's fabulous. Susanna has just, she's very meticulous and yeah. she has such a great eye, yeah. eye for things, you know? Mm -hmm. I, it's, it surprises me this is her first quilt because it really, it, I know she's saying she's come a long way, but also I see very much her style in this quilt. Yeah, I do too. She really has a point of view, right? Susanna, I think it's awesome. I know you were asleep because you were in Kuwait, but you need to know that we got a huge thumbs up. Yeah, we got a huge thumbs up from the crowd. The bat. Here's Babe. I listen. I, I don't. I don't favor Babe's comments, but I swear I look down every time I look down at the chat. Druid Godmother, she's right there, and I'm like, Bzz. I don't try. We we have a thing. There's a psychic thing. She says the backing is the sexy glimpse of undergarment. See, and I guess that's why my brain's like, read the comment that's on the screen because that's great. I love it. It's it is a sexy undergarment. I think that could be said about any quilt. But anyway, Susanna, it's fabulous. You did a fabulous job. I love it. Well done. Hell yes. Okay. Qua Qua Cat. We're going here next because I need to get this over with. Yeah. Um, Qua Qua Cat has three pictures. Oh my God. Um, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> There's three pictures and this is the first one she gave me. It's the first one she gave me, all right? Qua Qua Cat, what are you doing to me? Um, oh my God. Okay, picture one says Qua Qua Cat. Did I tell you there's three? Okay. Quote, I had to scroll back to the heady days. <laughs> heady shot. My hair is heady. I got it. This is huge hair. I had to scroll back yeah, to the. What, what was happening with your hair? I don't Listen, want to digress. But um, your mom's got a cute little headband on, but what? Is this like a. Uh, it's a, pulled a back. Or? It's pulled back. It's okay. like it's pulled back in a. in a And it's pushed forward. I don't know. Okay. I mean, so it's. You got like the bump it? The yeah. Bump it in yeah. There, like, yeah. <laughs> There's a bun. There's a bun in the back. There's a bun in the back. Okay. Um. Okay. <sighs> Look, I'm wearing the safety glove. At least we can say that, people, okay? <laughs> I remember that sweater. I had to wear something under it because you could totally see my bra. It was see-through. That's not okay for public television. I know. I know. Imagine that. God, all right. I, so she said, I had to scroll back to the heady days of the early 2010s. Why you got to say that, Qua Qua Cat? Why you got to be like that? Why you gotta be like that? Uh, back when I spent Saturday mornings watching quilt shows on PBS and first met Mary Fonz. Oh boy. Okay, let's go on to picture two. Wee. Um, yes, this is much better. Uh, picture two. At that time, our church had a prayer quilt ministry, which gave lap quilts to people who needed comfort. And Laura, the leader of the group, offered to teach anyone who wanted to learn. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for Laura. Um, they had a huge stash of fabric sample cards donated from the LA Garment District. Fabulous. So I got to cut out gorgeous gold stamped pieces for my first top. Um, yes. And by the way, this fabric, I am living for it. Living. And this too. Well, okay. I don't know what they gave you in those boxes, Qua Qua, but I need to to say that like you I don't think they probably were like here is a box of coordinated fabrics for you to sew with like you this is what I feel you innately understood gold blue 
orange, you know? I mean, this is a very, it's very elegant, you know, sort of, it's lovely. It's lovely what you chose. And picture three. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Picture three says, well, it was so off kilter. <laughs> Laura had to tear it apart oh, and re-sew it to align it. Life happened and a year later, I finally learned how to sandwich it. And I quilted it on my home machine and it was given away. I had forgotten about this first little quilt. So it was nice to remember and be grateful for Laura's generosity. Yeah, we're grateful for Laura's generosity. So great. Qua Qua, I love it. That was weird. The siren and the church sound actually harmonized for just a second. Um, it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. And the prayer quilt, like that's a really, that's a good way to start, right? I mean, that may, that's an interesting way to start quilting is like, not just through charity quilts, but like through church, you know? That's cool. I bet there's a lot of people who started that way. And people like Laura make it possible, right? Um, it's great. It's just totally cool. Laura had to, did you say Laura had to tear it apart and re-sew it? You know, so what? I mean, you know, like that's like, yeah, that's just, it, I just love it. I love it. It's a great quilt. Very well done. Good job, Quack Quack Cat. All right, Padma, your first picture. I mean, I almost started with this one because it's just, this, this, you know, there's good quilt pictures and there's good quilt pictures. Look at that little babe under that quilt. Look at that little babe. You know who just had a new baby? Mike McCormick of Quilt Folk. His wife had, yeah, his wife had a baby. Um, it's their third, a little boy. So his two big sisters now have a little little brother. Um, healthy baby, healthy mom. Anyway, so yeah. The kid under the quilt in the little crib. And that white wicker crib, I mean... I recognize, you know, I recognize that. That is very, I would, I'm going to guess Padma by 1980s bassinets, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think so. So here's what Padma has to say. So she says, <clears throat> oh, Padma, where did you go? Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Everybody hold on. Um. Um, yes. Okay. So, yes. So this quilt, Padma says, quote, this quilt was made in 1981, right? For the birth of my first son, Yasha, before half you quilt nerds were even born. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, here. You see? Uh, yeah. So here it is. Okay. I've got it here. Um, I learned how to make this quilt watching Eleanor Burns on TV. I've got three pictures from Padma, but it's really hard to look away from this child's head. Okay. I learned how to make this quilt by watching Eleanor Burns. I love this quilt so much, Padma. It's my favorite. It's my favorite, like, of, since, like, three minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't remember her name for years. All I could remember was that when she had scraps of fabric, she would throw them over her shoulder. Now I think making a star would be too complicated, forgetting that I had made one as my very first quilt. I tied it with yarn. God bless the tied quilts, man. They're so great. Can't believe. Anyway, okay, we'll talk about that later. When my first grandchild, Ian, was born five years ago, I gave the quilt to my son for his son. This is Ian now. <gasps> this is Ian now. Ah! Next to, hold on. This is Ian now. Next to the quilt that I asked my son to dig out of a box. Are you kidding me? Ian, get your foot off that quilt. Ian, get your foot off that quilt. And also, you're perfect. You're a little scam, and I don't even care what you do. You're perfect. Don't change anything, but also get your foot off that quilt. <laughs> and Pama goes on, the only other quilt I made in the 80s. This child is perfection. Are you kidding me? Are you, I can't with this. I mean, which... Wh I don't know. I don't know, Padma. I don't know which of these creatures. I, I love more of these beautiful creatures. Oh, my God. Um, anyway, sorry. She said, the only other quilt I made in the 80s was a log cabin quilt, which we traded for our first computer. What? 
You traded a quilt for your first computer. That is so cool. That is a great like tech quilt story. I, I have questions, Padma. We're gonna have to know more about that. What kind of what kind of show would that be? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, what did you trade? Bartering with quilts? Yeah, bartering. Like, what's the weirdest thing you ever traded a quilt for? I mean, it's it, it's interesting. Maybe it's just a question in the chat because I don't know that you have a picture of your first computer, Padma. But you traded a log cabin quilt for your first computer. That has like very poetic like implications. Anyway. The last thing that Bonda says now that we're finally through. I always wanted to get back to quilting, she said, but being a single mother of two, I never got much of a chance. I didn't start quilting again until 2022. Uh, we know this. We know this because I remember, Padma, you showed on the Quilt Nerd on Parade show, like your first quilt. I remember. This is so cool to see this. And I don't know. I love, I really, really like the pink and the red and the white. It's like peppermint. I love it. I think it's fabulous. I think it is great. It's so great. Oh, I see lots of welcome baskets. Professor Zekron. Zekron? Zekron, yeah. You're fully out of the chat jail. <laughs> okay, great. Hello, everyone. I'm brand new. You know, I think there is like a, as, as you can probably tell us all, Professor, is there's a there's a delay, right? Like you have to be, you know, following the, the show for, you know, I don't know, an hour or something like that before you can chat. And I guess we, we deal with so few rabble rousers, you know, and, and trolly people. I guess those those checks or locks or something are, are working. But yeah, I mean, a person such as yourself, I, I hate that you had to wait, but welcome. And all those welcome baskets are for you. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, and Amy Paps, by the way, a new subscriber, says, I once traded, <clears throat> pardon me, a quilt for a three-story dollhouse that had stained glass windows and working lights. What? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what's more valuable, the quilt or the dollhouse, <laughs> man. That's awesome. I know. The, the dollhouse, never it's never uh, uh, out of, you know, it always works, right? It's It always works. Um, yeah, it's wonderful, Padma. Everything about this is just, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Okay, we've got, we've got Raffle, Waffle, and we've got Spitzka. And that's it. That's it. Then we're, that's, just, that's it. Let's do Raffle and close with Spitzka. Um, Professor, by the way, um, thanks for joining us. And uh, you, and Texas Farm Gal came in. Hello, Texas. Shauna, I think I said hi to you before, probably. Um, and Professor's in Ohio. That's that's great. Oh, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you had good weather. Excellent. Word and Bird Nerd, hi. Wait a minute. Word and Bird Nerd. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. No. No, no, no. That's not possible. You weren't on the last. Well, hold, well. This, the, the, don't worry about this. We're, 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 we're... Oh, yep, here you are. You know what? That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy because you were right on the seam. It's right here. It's right here, Word and Bird Nerd. I'm, I'm really sorry. It's right here. I split the show, you know, and there was like a chunk of everybody who was on the first show, and then I started loading up all the people on the second show, and you were on the seam of the two halves and I don't know but it's it's right here and we will we will close out with you you will be the big finish thank you for saying something and I hope you don't feel bad about that it's a lot of wrangling it's a lot of photo wrangling and stuff but we got it thank you Kathy. okay so Raffle Raffle says Raffle I saw you out there Raffle says when thinking about my first quilt I was at something of an impasse of course she was, right? Um, that's perfect. In, is my first quilt the first one I sewed on or the first one I made from start to finish? I came to quilting by way of mending. Hmm. So only including my first start to finish quilt leaves out an important part of my origin story. Okay, I love this quilt ravel. It's so great. The stripe is, I'm living for it. Um, ultimately, she says, I decided the distinctions should go to two quilts. The one that got me interested in quilting and the first one I made all by myself. My mended quilt has, according to my husband, Raffle, by the way, let me make sure in the chat I'm showing the right picture first, right? Because it was it's it was the first one in your in your email. I think it's I think this is correct, but you let me know, okay? Um, she may have had to leave. Okay, Mary, okay. She, uh, yeah, She's she got a little one, here. I think, who needs a bath and things. I th I, that's what I'm remembering. Okay, um, so okay, so my mended quilt, according to my husband, just all uh, just has always kind of been around in his family. I believe 
let me just make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I believe my mother-in-law said that her grandmother was a quilter and made it. Really? Yeah, th this is mended. I mean, look at this. Wow, wow, look at this, look at this. That mended piece, I love this. Um, it had been heavily, heavily used through the years, and by 2020, it was almost in tatters. This ugly brown quilt is so soft and comforting. We like to joke that it is a magic blanket because it can put anyone to sleep. Oh, I love that so much. Oh. That's so great. It's so ugly, and but it's magic because it can put anyone to sleep. Oh, we all have those nights, right, where we can't sleep. And it's like, hang on. Let me get the magic quilt. You'll go to sleep. Um, oh, it's so good. It makes me want to cry. Um, it's the one we reach for when the kids are sick or have trouble sleeping. So I took it upon myself to save it patch by patch by hand, appliquing new patches and hand quilting over them where the original stitches had come loose. I had, I had done enough by the end of summer in 2020 to call it done. This thing looks so modern. That's why I wondered if I had the wrong quilt. I mean, the brown and the, the stripe, I just love it, but it looks very a la mode i mean it's really and and the way the brown has faded i love the aqua and the brown aqua and brown are a great combo it's really cool raffle you nailed it and then so so the magic quilt okay we should all have a magic quilt in our in our lives right the one that can anybody can go to sleep underneath it that's freaking gorgeous i'm gonna write it down seriously okay and then the other quilt uh, raffle sent is my first start to finish quilt she says has less of a story so far i started it in january 2021 and finished it in april um january 2021 yeah that was those we all we were if you're here today you were here in january 2021 that was the pandy uh big time i wanted something scrappy Raffle says, to use up the leftover scraps I had from my attempts at mask making. See? I had no quilting rulers, cutting mat, or rotary cutter at the time that I tried making masks, so I got sick of it pretty fast. <laughs> I found a pattern on Etsy, watched some YouTube videos, talked to some folks at one of my local quilt shops, and I was off to the races! Exclamation point. I maybe should have started with a nine patch, but it turned out pretty successfully, if I do say so myself. Hell yeah, it's fantastic! It's, I love it. I love this very bold blue zigzag in the middle. Kind of grounds the whole thing. It's just so great, Raffle. Very well done. Very well done. And I love to see these two quilts side by side, right? You know, like, like this is 2021. This is 2021 and, you know, I don't know. It was your mother, mother-in-law, pardon me, your mother-in-law, her grandmother had made it. So, I mean, we're talking, we're talking time span, time span. This is really great. It's, it's just awesome. And I love that you started making masks and that was your first foray. And then you're like, this is for the birds cutting with scissors. <laughs> Look at that, that, that unicorn. And I like that there's unicorn fabric in here and Raffle had nothing to say about how this was for anyone but herself. <laughs> you know, it's great. It's really great. Okay. Spitzka, are you ready? I hope you're ready, because this is you. This is your life. Now, Spitzka. And just a heads up, yes. Spitzka is Eva. Eva and Spitzka are Eva. the same person. Okay, you know what, Eva? I am ready to read your tale. You, you wrote a tale of this quilt, and I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read it. Some, some people send very little text. Sometimes I limit, you know, what people can send, usually on the quilt nerd on parade, because I know we're gonna get a lot of folks, you know, it's like, okay, only so many words. Hey, is, oh, it couldn't be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Abby out there, would it? Would it be Abby? Who just, if so, I just have so many things to talk to you about. I really do. If, you, if you're not Abby, then you don't know what I'm saying. And even if you are Abby, who just liked the stream, maybe watching on Facebook, you don't know why I'm talking to you like this. But anyway, there's a, there's, there's a person I know from my life in Iowa, and I, I, just, I, I just, I don't know. I saw her recently, and I just, I don't know. I really love her. I really love her. And I wanted to, like, write her a note and tell her that. And I need to do that. So if she's watching right now, you should know that I've been thinking about you, okay? 
<laughs> Back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, so this is Eva. Eva, look at this quilt. This is so cool. Eva writes, Hi, Mary, and fellow nerds. So this is a letter to everybody, okay? Please excuse me. I have horrible spelling and grammar, and I tend to over-explain things. I hope what I write makes sense. Same, girl, same. Oh, yes, you might have known me as Spitzka, but I am now mostly using Eva Little on Twitch. Still Spitzka on Discord. Cool, that's good to know. I want to start with thank you. Oh, okay. For, I have not read this yet. I have not. I, I have not. So... I want to thank you for creating this community and having this platform, for sharing our creations and sharing your passions about quilting with us. Your excitement for quilts is infectious and makes the topics come alive. Excellent. I'm glad, I'm glad you feel that way. Me too. I also want to thank all the nerds, yes, for being so well, warm and welcoming to people like me who are new to quilting. You guys have been so amazing at, for teaching me things and putting up with my millions of dumb questions. Girl, you're in the right place. She says, I got into sewing after my mother's passing, <clears throat> not only because I had inherited a massive fabric stash and machine, but also because my mother would make some amazing things and I wanted to keep the tradition alive. I'd always wanted to get into quilting and decided at the end of October to finally teach myself how. I jumped in whole hog and made my first quilt blanket in November. This was made for my oldest sibling, who's a bigger reader. The plans for the quilt was, uh, was supposed to remind, to remind her of the masks I had made during the height of the pandemic, okay, and turned into what you see now. Isn't that always the way? A good plan is always ruined when you try to execute it. But I still slipped in some things with some sentimental meaning to, uh, with the help of the real Spitzka. The jar, okay, now I've got, I've got, I've got photos. Okay, hang on now. I'm, I'm giving you a preview, but I just want to make sure because I've got four pictures. Okay, 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 don't look at that yet. Okay, okay. The jar on the top shelf comes from the fact that we grew up in a house that had this huge bottle that had some very old buttons in it. The monster on the second shelf, oh, he's so cute, was because our uncle would call, call us little monsters. This is my first attempt at applique, and has, uh, I had seen some instructions uh, uh, that said use white glue, but I had used too much, and it distorted a little. <laughs> um, I think I need to learn a better technique for this. Okay, the monster is perfect. I love his eyes. The third shelf has a fish tank on it because uh, Spitzka told me to make one. Where is the fish tank? Okay, maybe we have to go here. Fish tank. The third shelf has a fish tank. Oh yeah, fish tank. Oh, that's so clever. It's so clever. Um, no real reason, but because Spitzka said so. Yes, I'm the youngest sibling, if it's not obvious before now. This is the first block I designed myself without any help from the internet. Um, and next time I think I should top stitch some wavy lines on it uh, or something to give it movement. If anyone has suggestions, I would love them. The last row has something that failed. That was in um, all caps. And I wished I wish I had covered it up. The rectangle square with the animals wearing masks. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So here's this. The rectangle square with the animals wearing masks. Wow, I've never seen. That's interesting. I've never seen fabric with that has. You know, this is interesting. Have you ever seen any fabric with masks? That's that's very very interesting. What? Oh wow. Now we talk about fabric dating and like quilt dating. Can you? Just yeah, imagine. that is definitely like right? yes, like a moment in time. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's. I mean I, I like it. I mean it's like sometimes I just think like oh god I can't think about it anymore. But, but you know having can you Google can you Google that stuff like who made that fabric? I mean Eva maybe you can tell us. But I mean, where'd that come from? I have I'm very curious. Okay, but 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 Eva says the last row has something that failed, and you wish you had covered it up. Interesting. Um, the rectangle square with the animals wearing masks, um, a reminder of the masks that I, that I had made, uh, and a throwback to what the quilt was originally designed to be. It was supposed to be a picture frame, but it did not turn out that way. Maybe it should have been taller. That's interesting, Eva. I mean, I think it's, I think it's just right. I mean, it's it, it's it's to me, it just is part of this story. That's all. It's part of the story, and it makes sense. Finally, if you look between the shelves. Let's get the thing. If you look between the shelves, down from the frame, this might be my favorite part of the quilt. An actual label. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's what you had. An actual label, I wondered about this, uh, from around maybe 1940s or earlier, 
from my grandparents' furrier business. Wow. My grandfather was a sew sewer and would make the coats for the store. We still have a roll of old labels. And Spitzka had suggested I add it to the quilt since it added a nice touch to the quilt that already had so many memories in it. Love it. The backing is a flannelette with a bunch of dogs. And she gave a bonus puppy video or puppy uh image we, look I gotta tell you there was something about the color of this photo I was like that's a green pup he looks green and and in the most wonderful way I mean I just love it so much and I really like that it's like warming his little butt like it's just perfect I love everything about it but there's some kind of <laughs> like the flash or something put like this I wish I had a dog that was that color I would love I would love him a lot um and and so we she closes and says that uh, there was no real pattern I used for this first quilt. Uh, I just watched some YouTube videos and read some websites that had given me an outline. Uh, I do have a background in garment construction, she says. Eva, you're so interesting. Spitzka, I love it. And I went from there. I really enjoyed the process of making a quilt. And even though there were a number of problems with it, uh, even though there were a number of problems with it, um, and, and she says, how are, there some of, how are some of the books standing up with nothing to keep them? <laughs> keep them that way uh, she says <clears throat> you know I need to figure out where the needle is on my walking foot and I've always been allergic to straight lines uh, I can't wait to make my next one she says and thank you again Mary for and all the nerds for all that you do one day I hope to be as awesome as all of you guys oh Eva Eva or maybe Spitzka or maybe someone else she says oh that's a great one it's a great one they're all so great and that was a really nice uh, story about it all Fantastic. Did you find that, that mask fabric? <clears throat> Did you find anything? Yes, yeah, she actually said oh. it's Paintburst Studio, and then oh, I found it. Um, if you just search Paintburst Studio uh, Animals and Masks, I think it comes up. I found some on Etsy that it, the seller's in the UK, though, so I don't know if it's a, Interesting. only available in the UK. I don't, I don't know where you are, Eva, so. It, Eva, it's just great. I mean, the books and, and the, the aquarium, and it's just so perfect. Hey, Joyce. Um, it's wonderful. It's just, and Spitzka, you've been around for a hot minute, and I really appreciate your support, and you're a valued member of the community, and, you know, it's interesting. It's like when I say, like, become a subscriber, join this great community. Like, the community is great because of the people who have been here, you know, who make it, and and, and I really appreciate all that. It's, it's a great quilt, and it's fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. And now. And now. We will, uh, we will close this program with Little Bird Stitch, sorry, Word and Bird Nerds for Squill. And I'm really glad you're here, Word and Bird Nerd, so that you could, A, show this quilt because it's, it's fabulous, it's really great. Um, and it's also, and I'm just glad so you could catch, catch me <laughs> um, as I put all these slides together and things It can, it can, it is a lot, but I, to, 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 to miss someone would be, it's, it's just awful. It's just awful. So I'm glad that you were here to point it out. So this is Word and Bird Nerd's first quilt. Um, she does the, she's just real smart. <laughs> this gal, this gal I happen to know, she's real, real smart. Um, and so the precision and the design and the embroidery that's happening here, uh, it's really well executed and sort of methodical and uh uh word burdener did you do a needle turn applique for your first quilt yeah uh i think that's what's happening let's find out what she has to say uh i'm so glad that you're here to make sure that i mean what a i'm anyway anyway then here's what word and burdener has to say about this uh confection okay this this autumnal confection okay she says, oops, sorry. Yes, let's look at the whole thing. Quote, I made my first quilt in the late 1970s. <laughs> it's so cool. It's still so cool. Okay. After being inspired during the bicentennial. Several years earlier, I bought mail order pre-cut fabric squares from Montgomery Ward to patch my jeans. Later, I sewed together the rest of my unused squares to make a shower curtain. Great. When I decided to make a quilt... Now, hang on. Let me just make sure. Okay. 
I just, I've got three pictures from, from Word and Burn, and I want to get it, get it right. When I decided to make a quilt, it was nearly impossible to find decent cotton fabric, much less for quilt making. I don't know how I learned about lap quilting then, but that was the technique I wanted to try. Okay, yep. I scoured the Binghamton, New York area for cottons, made harder by limiting colors. Interesting. Um, limiting my colors to what would be natural for a leaf. <laughs> Much of the fabric I ended up with was, was either coarse or too sh soft. Uh, and, by, and by today's standards, kind of ho-hum. Cheap, unbleached muslin was used for the background. My ambitions were high to make a king-size quilt. Wow. Once I started, though, the inevitable happened. Who knew how difficult it was going to be to applique all those inside corners? Let's see, we've got a really nice look at that. God. Who knew how hard it would be, uh, how difficult it was going to be to applique all those inside corners and outside points? I decided to make a wall hanging instead. It isn't labeled or signed, but I need to take care of that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's 24 by 30 inches, hand applique, hand embroidery, hand quilting. You know, it's it's really, really great. And I honestly like the wall hanging thing. Hats off on that. Because this, is it still, does it hang now, Word and Bird Nerd? Is, is this in your, in your home? Is it displayed? Hey, Mary Jo. Oh, you just subscribed. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for subscribing. Really hot compost. It's, it's welcome back. Um, it's, 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 it is lovely. Penny, exactly. It's so great. Um, and the back, the back is awesome. So, so Word and Burner, it's not hanging at the moment. I need to get a dowel. You do need to get a dowel. And I wanted to point out that you, you, Look how tidy and sweet the little <laughs> the little hanging sleeve. It's like I'm gonna put a hanging sleeve on my on my little wall hanging. Oh, I just picture you just so cool. You, you know what? You really picked great fabrics. You had such a sense yeah. of scale. So, can may I say? Yes, please. That red and that red and yellow oh, that right there on the yes. left. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my I had mm -hmm. something made out of the red one. Yep. Um, but my mom had both of those. Those are like scream my childhood to me. Every yep. time I see those, it brings me like back yes. to childhood. I love yes. it. Kathy, yes. you don't know what you've done for me tonight, but seriously, I have to go back to the fact yes. you needle turn applique yep. on your first quilt. Yep. 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 You did. <laughs> yes, you did. And I would say, by the way, Cranston print works or Peter Pan. That's, you know, that's what it's giving. It's giving Peter Pan. Yes, yes, Peter right? Pan, yeah. Right, right. And, uh, and this is a wonderful fabric. Look at these little strawberries. Those are, I mean, those are gorgeous. That is a gorgeous fabric, I think. Oh, and you've got it in the two colorways. I mean, you really had a sense of, I feel like somebody did a reproduction of this. Maybe even like Fonz and Porter did this. This is, that's like, that's an old school print. It's so great. Anyway, but all your tiny, oh, I love this so much. I love this, 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 this. It's like very Laura Ashley, a little bit Liberty, but American. Anyway, um, yeah, you just had a sense of how to do this. Everything is really the same scale and, and it's so neat, Kathy. It's really great. And I think you should, well, A, you need to get your, you need to get your label on there and you got to hang this, hang it this fall. If you don't want to have it up all, day, all year, which, you know, would make sense. But it's really, really cool. And it's a great size. You better hang this up. You hear me? <laughs> you hang this up, girl. But um, you should, and you should take a picture, and you should send it. Ooh, ooh, that's our next, that's the next special. That's the next special. Let it be known. I want to see pictures of quilts that you have displayed in your house. Quilts in situ. Quil oh, my God. Oh, my God. Quilts in situ. Indeed. You're a genius. Fucking hilarious. Quilts in situ. That's the next. Quilt nerds. I'm not a genius. I'm insufferable. No, no. It's it's brilliant. I can't use in situ in a sentence. So, quilt, is that in action? Is that like in action? In place. In place. I don't have the, the post-it thing on my soundboard. I, I keep messing with the soundboard to try to do different things and I can't get it right. In place, quilts in place, quilts in situ. I mean, it's 
it's genius. Like that's really, really good. So that's what the next, that's the next one. It, the Quilt Nerd on Parade is just like what you're working on. And that's like coming up, you know, I think next month at some point. So I have that ready. But these special sort of side, you know, side shows, the side show of like Quilt Nerd people's stuff. Quilts in situ. I'm dead. Um, so yeah, I wanted, because like, we had that tonight with, with a mod art quilt, right? We saw that wonderful quilt hanging in the background and it wasn't even, you know, the point, right, of the photograph. We were looking at something else, but that was a, that was great and that was hanging up and I'd like to know what other things, what other quilts you have in situ. Cake, I don't know if you get like, like a gift for that or you get like, <laughs> like, I don't know. A lump of coal. No, no, it's fabulous. Oh, anyway, it's great. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's that's the show. That's the show, everybody. Um, we we did a giveaway. Peace, love, puppies. You scored, girl. You scored. You scored this. The Faith Ringgold book. Incredible. Donated by a quilt nerd. Sealed. Signed, sealed, delivered. I was listening to Stevie Wonder all morning. It was great. Uh, speaking of signed, sealed, delivered. Uh, I hope everybody who is at QuiltCon is having a great time. I hope you stay safe. I don't know what's going on with this. Hold on. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna get big again <clears throat> to say goodbye. Uh, yeah, what I'd else like can say Molly, Molly yeah. and all the rest of you, thanks for wasting my whole day because I couldn't stop looking at QuiltCon quilts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't looked yet. I haven't looked yet. I'm gonna like wait and just like binge. There's some amazing stuff this year. It's an yeah, amazing it's show. It's such an amazing show. And I mean, when and Jill's there, Molly's there. Who else is there, okay? People people know out there. So, yes, Word and Birdner is there. Yeah. Molly's there. Jill, I think Bridgewater. I think yes. Ivy was there for a day. Yep. I know I'm missing a bunch of other people that I know are there. Me too. Um, I think uh, Mother Nature, I think, was there. Yes. Yes, Mother so Nature's there, so he's there. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. You guys, don't tag me in anything tomorrow. I got work to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same. So um, have a but have a great time out there. Be careful. Um, report back. And um, I love seeing your first quilts. It's it's the best. It's beautiful. And uh, and yeah. And here we are. We're alive. It's a privilege, you know, to live to live today. So uh, make it good. And we'll see you on Tuesday for a lot. Oh, I got good stuff. I got really good stuff. I got reports, I got videos. We're not gonna get to the Sarah Mary Taylor video tonight, but we'll watch it. We'll watch it uh, from the Antiques Roadshow um, on Tuesday. Okay, y'all, be good, not too good. Bye. Thanks, Cake.